Johnny Mac, he's been covering the NFL since the year 1992. And, of course, you can hear him every day right here on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN. John, what was covering the NFL like back in 1992? Thought you were going to say 1900. Yeah, that's what it sounded like to me. Too. <laughs> uh, it's. I'll tell you what. It's a very different game. It really is. There's been a lot of change uh, in how the game is played, uh, and and really both on and off the field. And 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 now one of the significant differences is sort of the the calendar. I always talk about, and the reason we're always talking about the NFL is because they've done such a good job keeping it in the forefront and that's by design obviously because they always uh want to have the interest and it's worked uh beautifully to say the least no doubt about it uh and uh, one of the things with uh when you win the super bowl john you are that much closer to the opening of free agency which we've hinted at the last couple of days today at 97.3 espn.com stay or go john ranks the importance of the Eagles free agents. Let's take a look at some of the guys on this list, John. And, uh, you know, Will Beatty never really played. Um, so he's a guy that probably, you know, doesn't have a lot of impact. But uh, Ellerby's a guy that they brought in here. Now, you know, he might not have had a huge impact. But once Hicks went out, uh, he was a guy that ended up getting a little bit of time. So at 32 years old, it would probably be a long shot to see him come back here. But maybe not completely out of the question, considering that position is one that they are pretty light at. Yeah, uh, but remember, he was brought in, uh, obviously, after the Jordan Hicks injury and really after Joe Walker had his opportunity and and really didn't handle it uh, very well as a sub-package player. So you never say never, but at 32 in this league and you have to play the veteran minimum to – uh, the better option to go, if you can, is to get a younger body who can also play on special teams. It saves you a little bit of money. And obviously for a team uh, projected to be about 8 or $9 million over the salary cap during the new league year until they make some moves, uh, every dollar counts. So uh, it, it's probably unlikely. Ellerby did do a, a decent job as a, as a sub-package run defender as I said, but at 32 years old, it, it would probably be another situation where maybe they'd look to bring him in later in the season if there's an injury or something of that nature. John, how about number 11 on the list? You know my affinity for the kickers. You've got Caleb Sturgis at 11. Do they stick with Jake Elliott? Do they like Caleb Sturgis, a guy who was a pretty solid kicker for them at one point? Yeah, he is, and and he'll get another job easily. That's just a reflection of not him as a player because he's an above-average kicker in this league. It's just the reality that Jake Elliott kind of Wally pipped him, and uh, he's the kicker moving forward. There's no question about it. Uh, The 61-yard field goal arguably, as I mentioned, kind of set the Eagles on this run, the walk-off against the New York Giants all the way through the Super Bowl. Uh, his life strength and the fact that he's obviously a rookie kicker last year, uh, he's very young, uh, very inexpensive, uh, does need to clean up sort of those miss, missed extra points, but his ceiling is so high as a kicker, there's no doubt about it the Eagles are going to go with him, and Caleb Sturr just understands that, and, and he's going to be a kicker in this league as well because he's he's pretty good. And since we're on special teams, you've got Brian Brayman on the list. He's an interesting story because he didn't come back to the team until December, but he certainly stepped up and was a key contributor. But he's a free agent. Yeah, and he's another one of those guys. It's it's sort of tough in this league, and the Eagles have been better about it than most. You're really, you talk about Brian, Brian Brayman, and he's listed on the roster you know when chip kelly was here and they played a 3-4 he's listed as an outside linebacker uh, now he's listed as a defensive end but the reality is he's a special teams player and that's all he does uh and he's very good at it uh but a- as i said before what you want out of a special teams guy is somebody who can also give you some depth on, on the defense and that's what brian doesn't do uh and and so it's difficult to to find that roster spot for him. And that's the reason he wasn't here last year. 
uh, and he was on the street in December, and and the Eagles were able to bring him back, and he and he made some impactful plays on special teams. I uh, they'd love to keep him around. Uh, the money wouldn't be an issue, uh, but you're always looking to improve and get younger and get a more versatile player, and and that's the hurdle kind of Brian always faces. And then John, another special teams guy is. Kenyon Barner, who's on your list now, he's had some moments, but I guess the future and what's going to happen with Darren Sproles has an impact then on Barner's future, right? Yeah, it really does, because obviously if Darren's here, he's the punt returner. He's one of the best punt returners ever in this league. So that would kind of sort of X out Kenyon's role. Now, he did a number of things, also return kicks. Uh, and, and really was part of the running back by committee as the fourth guy would always get uh, a few snaps per game. But if you look at where the Eagles are and how they project the fact that they're trying to get Danell Pumphrey back in the mix, and if Darren Sproles wants to be back on this team, there, there's a couple issues there. Obviously, he's out of contract. Obviously, he's intimated retirement in the past. I do believe if he was healthy through this run, and won the Super Bowl that way, he would retire and walk away. But he said he, he doesn't want it to end the way it did uh, with the torn ACL and the broken hand. Uh, so it'll be interesting. Obviously, he, he could probably, if he wants to play, get more money somewhere else. Uh, then again, he's 34, and we all know how, how – uh, teams in this league feel about aging running backs. The thing about Darren Sproles, though, everybody recognized he's not a bell cow back. He's just a specialist, the third down guy, and, and a great pump returner. So there is a role for him in this league if he wants to play. It's just a matter of uh, can they work out the, the money aspect. Yeah, do you think he, he offers the Eagles then that hometown discount or the fact that he wants to stay around a, a Super Bowl defending team because he didn't get to go out on the way that he you know wanted to go out? Yeah, I mean, it's a possibility. That's one of the beauties of winning the Super Bowl is that sometimes you will get veteran players who will take a little bit less to try to go get uh, another one and and feel like you're on the cusp of doing it. Uh, You know, as far as the hometown discount, if the San Diego Chargers still existed, they'd probably be getting that from Karen. But uh, he certainly loves uh, the Eagles organization, loves his teammates. Uh, so if if he does want to play and he wants to be on a serious contender, he might be back. John McMullen here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Let's look at uh, another guy on this list, uh, which is LeGarrette Blunt. We've talked a little bit about him in the previous uh, days here, but you have him ranked as the sixth uh, most important guy to bring back because, you know, there's a lot of – um, running backs on this roster already, you know, with and then Sproles enter him in. So, uh, number one, how important is Blunt, to, you know, to the Eagles that they should bring him back? And number two, how likely is it? Well, I don't think it's very likely. I, I do think it's more important than people think. He was really effective, and, and he didn't create any waves. Everyone was concerned. Uh, would he have an issue with less touches, especially after Jay Ajahi got here? Uh, and you didn't hear a peep out of him. And, and there's something to the fact that the guy has won consecutive Super Bowl championships in different cities, uh, and he's been a key cog on both teams. And he dominated in the Super Bowl. He's still a really good player. But the reality is he's a 31-year-old guy. Uh, we just mentioned with Darren, uh, running backs after 30, you, all, you don't have to think back very far. Look at the market. For LeGarrette Blunt coming off all those touchdowns in New England, it was virtually nothing. So I, I don't think you have to break the bank uh, to bring him back. I think he'd probably uh, be amenable to come back. But it, it, it's an issue where this team is probably going to move forward and the, and the main guys in the backfield are Jay, uh, Ajahi, and Corey Clement. So I don't think they believe they need him back, but I, I, I'm not sure I agree with that. Uh, stay or go. The article is up at 97.3 ESPN.com, ranking the importance of the Eagles free agents. Number five, uh, a guy that I don't even know that a lot of Eagles fans would remember or know was on this team, 
and that was Corey Graham. And he was a the guy they signed late in training camp because he played with Schwartz in Buffalo. I don't know what kind of impact he had during the course of the year because I really don't remember a standout play, but he had the interception uh, in the playoffs. And, uh, you know, he was the guy who got told, hey, you're going to cover Gronk. Now, he didn't do it very effectively, but um, this is a guy that was one of those underrated, under, unheralded players on this defense. Yeah, and, and I think more than most people realize, you bring up a lot of the issues. It's not about the plays he made. It's about the comfort he gave Jim Schwartz uh, as a third safety be, behind Malcolm Jenkins and Rodney McLeod. And what that a- enabled Schwartz to do was play a lot of big nickel with, with Malcolm Jenkins in the slot when he wanted to, and a lot of dime where, where Malcolm, Malcolm essentially would play a linebacker. He, if Corey Graham is not there, he doesn't feel comfortable doing that. And, and all of a sudden, you don't have all these varied looks uh, the Eagles can throw at you defensively. So from that standpoint, uh, I think Corey Graham is, is much more important to that defense and that defense's success than people realize, certainly than the statistics bear out, as you mentioned. Uh, because if Jalen Watkins is in that role, uh, who's a restricted free agent, Jim Schwartz is not playing the same types of defenses because he doesn't have confidence in him. But Corey, he understood, is a veteran guy who's played a lot, has had a lot of success in this league, uh, and he felt comfortable with him. So unless you can replace that, that comfort zone for Jim Schwartz, and I don't know how you do that with a young player, I think he's very, very important to this defense. He's not going to cost a lot of money. Uh, and and you could bring him back if he wants to continue playing. So he's he's pretty he's higher on the list than most people would expect for that reason. Jim Schwartz just likes him and feels comfortable with him. John McBowen on with us, and that's the secondary. John, of course, they had that talented defensive line where they would say not four but almost eight or at least seven strong. And one of those guys you have listed at number four, that's Bo Allen, who uh, looks like he might be tough to keep around. Yeah, I, I think there's two guys that you look at, and I, I don't see any way the Eagles are going to be able to keep, and that's Bo Allen, and, and also number three on the list, which would be Trey Burton, simply because I think other organizations will see them as starting-level players. Uh, they'll give them starting-level money. Uh, and obviously, in Bo's case, you look at who's ahead of them, and Fletcher Cox and Tim Jernigan, uh, Fletcher's got the huge deal. Tim Jernigan just signed a big money extension. There's just no money for Bo Allen, and that's unfortunate because he, he was a key part of the strength of that defense, which was the front four and, and the depth that could throw at you. Hey, John, uh, Trey Burton will always be remembered for uh, the Philly special yeah. play and his versatility. But he was so good when Ertz was out. or it's, you know, yeah. He had to be the starter like day of the game. Five touchdown catches, in. right, in, in just a couple of starts. So he obviously – I think he's going to be one of those guys that's going to probably get an offer that you're going to end up being like, holy mackerel. Um, I think someone's really going to pay a lot of money to bring him in. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I think he could get anywhere from 6 to $7 million a year. Uh, and you guys kind of just out- outlined the problem. I, it's not like the Eagles don't know he's a good receiver, don't know he can be effective as a receiver. It's just really difficult to play Zach Ertz and Trey Burton a lot of snaps together because neither of them are strong blockers. They're both r- receiving tight ends, and obviously Zach, as good as Trey is, he's not close uh, to Zach Ertz, and few are. So it's one of those situations where you can't justify the kind of contract he's going to get because you can't get him on the field to justify it. And that's one of those unfortunate things, and that's kind of what happens to Super Bowl teams is maybe they were a role player here and somebody else is going to look at him and say, that that kid could be a, a key cog in our offense. Yeah, and uh, I, I guess, you know, you would automatically go to Minnesota and Indianapolis as two teams high on that list because of their new coaches. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you saw Minnesota already signed Josh Andrews off the Eagles practice squad, uh, John Filippo there. Uh, they have a good tight end, Kyle Rudolph, but he's more – of an inline tight end. So they would be looking for a, a movement 
sort of H-back, which would fit Trey Burton. And, and certainly Frank Wright knows better than most how effective Trey was uh, when Zach Ertz was out of the lineup. So, yeah, those two teams would make a lot of sense. Hey, John, I think your guy at number two is one of the most debated, talked about guys in the free agent list, and that's Patrick Robinson because they got such a deal out of him on that one-year deal. But uh, age, uh, his history of injuries, uh, uh, Sidney Jones, there's a lot of factors that whether or not they bring Patrick Robinson back. Yeah, and I, and I said it's probably Howie Roseman's most difficult decision because a lot of those things you mentioned are, are real, Pete. He's never put uh, back-to-back consecutive seasons. He's had a lot of injury problems. Uh, he is uh, uh, getting up there in age, at least for the cornerback position. But, man, he was good this year. Uh, and he it, it's hard to imagine anybody else putting them at that nickelback slot and playing as well as Patrick Robinson did this season. Maybe even Patrick Robinson himself. I'm not sure he can back it up. But I, I talked with Mike earlier in the week. I, I think a lot of people assume what you just said, that, well, Cindy's going to be there. So you don't need Patrick Robinson. But that's a fundamental misunderstanding of outside cornerback versus slot cornerback. And they're two completely different positions. As talented as Sidney Jones is, he's an outside cornerback. Rasul Douglas is an outside cornerback. Ronald Darby is an outside cornerback. Jalen Mills is the one guy that could perhaps project uh, to move inside uh, because he's he's got some short area quickness. He's got uh, some of the coverage skills, some of the understanding of, of sort of uh, you know multiple routes that that, that people like. Uh, Danny, Danny Amendola, for instance, in the Super Bowl could run out of the slot. Uh, but that's that's a big if. And, and I think you got to make difficult decisions, and the Eagles are probably going to make one here and say, we have young cornerbacks and we're going to have to try to get along without Patrick Robinson. But that that's not going to work. Uh, John McMullen here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. All the NFL news and notes looking at the Eagles. These are the 13 free agents, and top on that list for you, is Nigel Bradham, and uh, Bradham, another one of those Buffalo guys that were brought over here and really fits in with what they do here, but he had two really solid seasons, and you wonder if there's a team out there that says, hey, our defense is close, we need a voice to get us over the edge, and that he will be that voice for one of these teams that feels they're really close defensively. Yeah, it's a possibility because he did play so well uh, this season, and he showed off a lot of versatility that I think most people didn't didn't think he had. And even just the fact that he handled uh, the communication is, uh, uh, with Jim Schwartz so seamlessly after Jordan Hicks went down, he, is, he essentially was the quarterback of the Eagles' defense once Jordan got hurt. Uh, and I, I don't think a lot of people knew he could do that. I don't, I don't think the Eagles knew he could do it before they gave him the role, and he handled it so well. So you have all of a sudden this guy who's proven to be a very cerebral player, and he's also the biggest intimidator uh, they have in the front seven. So he, he's been a very effective player. I think the positive signs is he, he knows he's played his best football in Jim Schwartz's scheme. I, I think he wants to stay here. Uh, I think it comes down to they, he probably will give the Eagles a bit of a discount. It's not to say significant one. So I think the bigger issue for Philadelphia is can you afford to pay Nigel Bradham and Michael Kendricks uh, upwards of $7 million each? Uh, the answer to that is no. So in that instance, you probably have to move Michael Kendricks, uh, and, and, and we'll see if they do that with Jordan Hicks returning. Um, it's a difficult decision, but I, I certainly think – Jim Swartz, bottom line, would rather have Nigel Bradham than Michael Kendricks. Do you think, you know, last year Michael Kendricks kind of won it out. Now, he played a lot this year because of Hicks. But with Hicks back, do we go back to square one with Kendricks? Yeah. I mean, there's only, in today's NFL, there's only room for two, three down linebackers. You're going to be a nickel or dime the majority of the time. Uh, so that third linebacker is only going to play 25 to 30 percent of the time uh, and and Michael wasn't happy with that he sees himself as a starting linebacker he played 
very well this season. Uh, when Jordan did go down, uh, he proved that certainly he should be a, a starting linebacker in this league. But if Bradham's back, if Hicks is healthy, he's not going to start here. So that would be the odd man out. John, that's on the defensive side of the ball. And, of course, I was off a couple days earlier in the week. But uh, with Frank Reich now in Indy and John Filippo in Minnesota, uh, Doug Peterson actually, I guess, came out in an uh, interview and said he might go without an offensive coordinator. Do you see a situation like that, or do you think for sure that they'll have an offensive coordinator in place when the season starts? Well, they're, they're, they're still mulling it over. Uh, I think there's two ways they could go uh, and sort of elevate both Mike Rowe and, and Deuce Staley and give them more responsibilities on their plate, uh, whether it's passing game coordinator and running game coordinator sort of two people to fill Frank Reich's void. Uh, Or they could bring in sort of a veteran who understands how to structure plays. Uh, And and that, I think, is the biggest issue with replacing Frank Reich because the Eagles were very effective in in how they drew up their plays. And the fact that Doug has talked about he, he wanted three sort of potential uh, issues for the opposing defense out of every single formation. And that's a running play, a screen play, uh, a passing play. And that makes it difficult because uh, when, you're, when you're studying film, uh, you look for trends. And, and you say, if they're in this formation, they're going to run this. But the Eagles can run multiple plays out of the same formation. That's part of what made them so successful. Uh, and that's sort of the, the, the veteran steady hand that Frank Reich had for this offense and certainly was a part of that. So, you know, there's some people on the street. Jim Caldwell would be uh, probably the biggest name who has a lot of experience uh, doing stuff like that. You could bring him in as sort of a senior assistant. But as far as somebody being named offensive coordinator, I don't know if the Eagles are going to do that simply because if they do, they're going to upset either Deuce Staley or, or Mike Groh, the one who doesn't get it. It's probably going to be upset. Right. back. I think back in the day with the Wizen Hunt situation when they had two coordinators, right, and they, only one guy was able to go and take a head coaching job. I, I guess, uh, John, uh, Deuce Staley maybe more than Grow. Is that a guy like that feels like he's paid his dues? Would, he would be more disgruntled, or would Mike Grow also, you think, have his uh, feathers ruffled if he wasn't named the guy? Well, I, I think Deuce, yeah, I mean, Deuce, because of his history in this organization, I, I think that would be the biggest issue. Uh, but if you look at all the coordinators in this league, there's only one that came from sort of a running back coach and, and then became a coordinator, and that's Eric Bieniemy under Andy Reid in Kansas City, and he just got that job uh, after Matt Nagy left. So, uh the history uh, of sort of coordinators um, they go through as quarterback coaches or, or things of that nature. Mike Groh, obviously, son of, son of a famous coach and Al Groh, played quarterback in college, has coached quarterbacks in the past. He sort of has more the resume of an offensive coordinator. But Deuce has been here since 2011. Uh, he's been here as a player. He's loved here. Uh, so it, it's a difficult thing, and it's part of the managing personalities. We always talk about with Doug Peterson. He's so good at doing it in the locker room. Now he's got to do it in the coaching staff. He's got to sort of juggle personalities and, and make sure everybody's happy. Uh, John McMullen here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. The NFL news and notes, of course, every day at this time. There's a lot of NFL stuff. Uh, the Eagles free agents. You can check out Stay or Go right now at 973ESPN.com. Thanks, pal. Thank you, guys.